Hello and welcome to this session. So in this session we are going to be talking about IP routing and this is how we basically exchange packets or send information from one router to another and this enables uh, communication between uh, different uh, networks or uh, subnets. Now if you're into this kind of content remember to hit the like button, comment down below and uh, subscribe to my channel so that you're updated each time I upload a new video. Now. Uh, just like a switch, a router is uh, intelligent and is able to learn about uh, other routers or other networks and uh, it stores this information in the IP routing table. Now, as you all know, an IP address uniquely identifies a node on a network that is a, a client on a network and each IP address belongs to a unique uh, subnet and uh, each uh, subnet may belong to a different area of the network. Okay, and uh, these uh, subnets in the different areas of uh, networks need to communicate with the, each other at some point. Now, what do they use uh, to do this? We have what we call uh, routes, and uh, routes are path information to guide the uh, packet forwarding so that the uh, communication between the two routers can be achieved, or uh, communication between uh, a client and a server can be reached or can be achieved. Now, a routing device forwards packets to a destination subnet based on uh, routes, uh, which are the path uh, that guide uh, the packet forwarding. And uh, as we said earlier, a routing uh, device maintains an IP routing table that stores uh, routing information. And this is basically the other routers that it is aware of or other networks that uh, our router is aware of. Now, let us get to discuss uh, what uh, a root uh, entails or uh, a root uh, uh, comes uh, with. Now, a root uh, has what you call a destination, and this is basically the destination subnet or the destination network. And uh, we have what we call a subnet mask or a mask, and this identifies a, a subnet or a network together with the destination uh, IP address and uh, we also have what we call an outbound interface and this is basically the interface through which the data is sent out of or uh, sent through. Now when it comes to an IP routing table, uh, a router discovers uh, uh, routes using uh, multiple methods which we are going to look at uh, later in this video and uh, once an optimal route is selected the routing device stores it in the IP uh, routing table then forwards packets based on the routes uh, that it has stored in the IP routing table. Let us uh, look at how uh, a router works or uh, how does a routing uh, work. Now every router makes its own decision alone based on the information that it has in its own uh, routing table and uh, the information in the routing table of one router does not necessarily match the routing table of another router. So the information that one router has does not necessarily match uh, what uh, another router uh, has in its IP routing table. And also the routing information about a path does not uh, necessarily provide a uh, uh, return routing uh, uh, path or uh, return routing information for that uh, packet. The packet uh, could come uh, in another route, so those uh, that is how a uh, uh, router works, and uh, those are the principles uh, that uh, come uh, with the router. Let us look at uh, these entries that are stored in the IP the routing table, and uh, the entries include the destination network, uh, that is uh, self-explanatory the root source uh, which means the source uh, network, the metric uh, depending on the routing protocol that uh, is being used by the router and uh, the next hop means the next router to which uh, the packet is going to be forwarded to. The root timestamp is uh, the time the packet is sent and the exit interface is the interface through which uh, the packet is uh, forwarded uh, out of. Now there are different uh, types of routes and uh, one of uh, the routes that we have is a default route and this defines our path to a specific uh, network. We have what we call a uh, direct uh, routes 
and these are uh, automatically generated by devices and uh, point uh, to locally directly connected uh, networks. We have what we call uh, static routes and these are manually configured by network administrators and we also have dynamic routes and these are routes that are dynamically uh, run by routers using uh, dynamic uh, routing protocols. Now, how does a router identify uh, to which node or to which client uh, it is going to forward uh, the packets to? We use uh, what we call the longest uh, matching uh, method and this is whereby the router will compare the information in the IP routing table until the longest match is met and uh, it's going to basically forward that traffic uh, to that uh, node or to that uh, client. Remember that uh, a network has a, a range of IP addresses depending on the prefix and uh, this uh, range uh, is could uh, be st all be stored in a, an IP routing table or could not all be stored in an IP routing table. So it uh, really depends uh, on the longest match that uh, the router has and if it doesn't have the longest match then it's going to just uh, automatically drop uh, the packet now let us uh, get to understand uh, some of the networks or uh, examples of networks that we have we have what we call uh, local networks and these uh, are uh, automatically generated by devices and are basically point to point locally directed uh, networks this is where you just uh, you have connected directly to the router one router to another they will basically just learn about each other and we have what we have we call uh, as uh, remote routes or uh, remote network routes and these are dynamically learned by routers using dynamic uh, routing uh, protocols now uh, other types of routes that we could have, we could have what we call a, stand a standard static route and this uh, defines a specific path to a network. We could have a default static route, defines a, a path to any network. You could uh, forward traffic to any network. We have what we call a, a floating static route and this is basically a backup route in case uh, of failure of the standard uh, static route or the default uh, static route. And uh, we also have what we call as the summary static route, and this basically summarizes uh, network prefixes. If uh, packets are to be sent to one network or uh, to different networks, then it's going to summarize uh, the uh, the routes that are supposed to uh, end up to these devices using the longest match, and it's going to basically distribute uh, that information according to the routing uh, uh, information in the IP routing table. Now, talking of uh, routing protocols, we have uh, two types of uh, routing protocols. We have interior gateway protocols, and these are basically uh, protocols that help us communicate in uh, internal networks, or uh, when you have two routers uh, in one network. And uh, we also have what we call uh, as exterior gateway protocols, and these are uh, what help us to connect outs outside uh, our uh, routers or outside our networks uh, into the internet. Now, interior gateway protocols are uh, divided into two. We have what we call as distance vector uh, routing protocols and we have link state uh, routing protocols. The difference between the two is that uh, the distance vector called, uh, d uh, uses the metric value of uh, a route if for example a route uh, has the metric value of 10 it's going to add 10 uh, 10 if uh, the other route is 4 then it's going to add 4 then you're going to basically get the total cost of that uh, route as being a uh, 24 and the route is going to be used uh, uh, whether the, the it's busy or not busy it's going to be the route that is going to be used for uh, to forward that traffic. But when we talk about uh, link state, uh, we look for uh, is that uh, by path or route uh, available? What uh, what what or what condition is it?
what condition is it in and uh, for distance vector we have a uh, uh, RIP version 2 we have EAGRP and uh, for version 6 we have a uh, RIPNG and the uh, EIGRP version 6 for distance uh, vector uh, protocols for link state protocols we have OSPF uh, we have ISIS uh, that is in uh, IP version 4 and uh, for IP version 6 for link state uh, protocols or uh, link state uh, uh, gateway protocols we have OSP, uh, OSPF version 3 we have ISIS uh, for IP version uh, 6 and uh, for exterior gateway protocols we have a uh, BGP 4 for IP version 4 and uh, in IP version 6 we use BGP MP which is a uh, BGP for IP version 6 now that's it when it comes to IP routing thank you for joining me in this one see you in the next one